Hello submarine friends. While I wait for parts to show up for the actual ROV that I'm building, I've decided to work on another component and that is the tether retractor. So this is an electric spool which is speed controlled, works really nice, it's nice and sensitive and I made it with just stuff that was laying around the shop. So the two discs here, they're actually from some sort of a spool that I got from the dump and I just bolted it together with fiberglass tubes in between. The nice thing about that is I can make the spool wider or narrower as needed. So if I change the length of the tether, this is very adjustable. So the tricky part about making this is having a rotary motor that can handle the depth and can run slow enough and speed control. So what I've done, I've taken a Lenco Marine actuator which typically extends in and out because it's a linear actuator, but I modify it so that it rotates like a motor. So it's a gear reduction motor now. And then I oil fill it and put a pressure compensating tube on it and it's done. So first I'm gonna show you guys how I do that with the actuator and then I'll give you a demonstration of it working. So you have to take the actuator right apart so I start by taking the end cap off, of course. Now this one's already been modified for uh, deep underwater use, so it's got the fitting and the uh, penetrator is already done. But now I'm modifying it to be a rotary motor instead of a linear actuator. So that just pops off like that. And the whole motor assembly will pull out now the trick here is don't spill the gears all over the place and put them in order on your bench so that uh, you don't mix them up. Okay, so this guy right here, this Allen key is a bugger to get out. So the way I do it is I wedge a screwdriver in here and I hold it with one hand and of course my vice is in the other shop and then I've already loosened this and then I just rotate this out of here the screwdriver holds the gear from turning so that's pretty simple and once we get this screw out then the gear just pops out usually okay well I can just pull on that and the gear will come out. So there you have it. Now I'm going to remove the cylinder. This one is damaged. So now what I'm going to do to make this a rotary, see there's damage right here. That's because some bonehead, mainly me, over tightened the fill plug which drove the plug into this rod and wrecked it. But for my purposes, it's gonna stick out that far so that's going to be inside and the o-ring seals are right here so it'll be just fine. So the way this works is this rod rotates and that makes the stainless steel rod go back and forth. So that's a linear actuator. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spot weld this threaded rod to this stainless steel rod and now what's going to happen is this thing is just going to rotate. Instead of going in and out, it's going to rotate. Now I have a rotary actuator. How friggin' cool is that? So while I have this guy apart, I'm going to show you what you have to do to make this thing go deep in the water. And I mean deep, because it's oil filled. Right in here, I drilled two holes. So they go right through there. And another one there. And so what that does is it, it makes sure that oil is going down inside this cavity because it, otherwise it would have to pass that by that bushing. And when the actuator goes in and out, the volume changes so fast, you need good oil flow. In this case, we don't need great oil flow because the volume is never changing. That's the beauty of this. I think it's gonna work terrific. Okay, so I welded this up. I got two big spot welds there. I don't wanna weld the out of it because I don't wanna wreck the shaft in any way. I mean, I can always add weld. So you see I wrapped electrical tape around it. That's just so that I don't get any spatter on this finished shaft. 
and then it won't seal on the o-rings so that's no good okay so there we have it i should maybe touch that with a file so that i'm not sure if i have to go past the o-ring yeah i have to go past the o-ring with that so i'm just gonna give that a little file job okay so i found my file and i'm just gonna touch that up just to make sure there's no lip or burr there going past the o-ring actually there's two o-rings that'll do now i'm just gonna throw a touch of wheel bearing grease on there because that's what i got handy just so that it goes by the o-ring nice Okay, so now you'll also notice I have a fill plug there. That is to put WD-40 oil in, and then there's another vent plug right here on this end cap so that you can get the air out. So we'll just slide that puppy back in. Went in good, that's all right. And we're in. Now we just reassemble. Again, don't forget to drill holes in there. Another thing that's nice now is this is fixed, so now I don't have to try and hold that gear. I can just put a bolt through here and take my Allen key and tighten that screw. Normally you can't because that threaded rod will just turn inside the shaft. Now we have to put our gears back. So we put them in order, just like so. Now we slip the motor back on. Now this can be a real bugger. You have to line up the two spots guide pins and then you have to try I know what I've had to do in the past is I turn this that little shaft on the end of the motor and then the gears can line up there we go perfect so now that's back together now this is something I am changing that o-ring on stopper ring I'm actually going to change this wiring because this is built for my submarine arm and what that means is the wires travel through the oil line so there's an oil line that feeds the actuator and it comes from it comes from a bladder that does pressure compensating so I don't need that now because the volume's not going to change. There we go, just like so. Now just put the two screws in and we're done. Now again, I'm going to be changing this to just a regular straight electric penetrator. Again, because I don't need oil flowing in and out. I can just fill it Put a small compensation line on it. The water pressure will squeeze the compensation line and that'll maintain the pressure inside. And now I'll grab a battery and we'll test this. Okay, so let's try this thing out. So you can see now we have a rotary actuator from a linear actuator. This thing will go thousands of feet deep because it's oil filled. Now I'll put a speed controller on it for my purposes. It'll go much, much slower. Again, this is for winding in the spool on the ROV tether. So I'm going to give you a demonstration of how it works. So here we go. Again, it's speed controlled. So you see, I can make it go as slow as I want or quite fast. Plus, I can actually stop it and just hold it and it doesn't hurt anything. It's fantastic. Now I still have to make a fair lead in the front to guide the umbilical cord onto the spool, but I can't do that till the ROV is mounted because I don't know the exact location of this thing yet. So right now it's just bolted to the submarine chassis and we'll proceed once the ROV is on there and mounted. Ciao for now.